Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In this talk, I will be uh, discussing with you uh, the skeletal anomalies in the first trimester. The question is, can we diagnose in the first trimester? Of course we can, but uh, the challenge is to find out the typical signs and to know to differentiate between the different skeletal abnormalities. So uh, many of uh, people doing prenatal ultrasound like us, they hate in a way skeletal dysplasia. And I hope at the end of the talk, we'll uh, love it a little bit because I will try to give you some typical sentinel signs on skeletal anomalies. In general, if you deal with the skeletal dysplasia, you will end up always by checking this uh, paper and the uh, every five, six years actualization of the classification of genetic uh, skeletal disorders. In this uh, classical, let's say, standard paper, um, it's, all skeletal anomalies are well documented. And uh, as is written here, there are 42 groups with 460 diseases. And you can imagine that we cannot be discussing all these. And uh, you see the, gene, the number of genes are 437. And uh, they can, uh, let's say, reach 92% of the uh, of disorders can be detected by genetic testing. So. In other words, we know what we are speaking about. The question is how to get to the final diagnosis. On the other hand, today, the geneticists, for them, it's easier to uh, run the whole panel of health disorders instead of focusing on only one. And then if it's negative, starting on the next one, it's even cheaper to, to do the whole in one package. So let's start. Uh, and people ask me sometimes, where do you read? Where can we have more information? I think these two books are very informative. One is dedicated to the fetal and perinatal skeletal dysplasia, uh, where it's really the best book, uh, in my opinion. And in the book of um, the uh, the authors here, the Deborah Krako, who wrote in this book, also contributed to a very uh, a comprehensive part of the skeletal dysplasia. So these two books. If you want to